This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. You may have heard me mention this before in some of the previous lessons, and that is one of my favorite panels in Illustrator is the Pathfinder panel because it's got so many cool things in it. So I've got three documents for you as kind of demos because I'll tell you what, Nothing shows you how something works better than an actual demonstration. So go into Divide Trim AI, Merge Crop AI, and Outline and Minus Back if you'd like to follow along. So I'm going to go back to Divide and Trim, and I'm going up to the word Window on the pull-down menu, and I'm going to go down to Pathfinder. There she is. Love this panel. We are going to concentrate on just this bottom row in this particular movie, this lesson. Let's start with the first one over here, and that one is called Divide. So up here, for my first demo, what I have is a whole bunch of vertical and horizontal lines. Okay, so they're all one piece in blue and one piece in yellow. What I'm going to do is press Undo to put them back. That is my actual favorite key in the whole world. Life needs an Undo button. Let's go ahead and select all of them. I just click this one button right here called Divide. It doesn't really look like much happened, but something actually really did. Now, by default, they are grouped together. So if you want to, you can ungroup them, or you can just pick up your direct selection tool, leave them grouped, and use that. As you can see, they're different, separate, unique pieces now. That's what they are. Let me go ahead and undo. Let me do this. Let me select. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to select every one of these, actually every other one of these in that row. And then I'm going to come down here and move over one and select every other one in this row. My sister, when she was growing up, was a Girl Scout and she used to make pot holders. And you may kind of remember those too. They were on kind of like a, a frame and you ran this stuff whatever it was, wool, whatever it was, through it. And uh, basically it made this weave and you made a pot holder. And I'll just do those three rows. You get the idea. I have every other one selected in those three rows. And I've offset them for each one of the rows. If I make sure I have the fill color selected, which I do, and change it back to the color of the blues, since they're separate items now, what I can do is create the illusion of a weave. And what I absolutely love about the human mind and its ability to try to show us a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional surface is that to most people, those blue and yellow lines now will look almost bent. Now, they're not, but our mind is trying to recreate a three-dimensional space in a two-dimensional world. It's kind of fun. Let's do it again on these. Now, again, these are just simply circles. You know, that's it. Undo. Select them all. Come over here, hit divide, and now we have separate rings. There's a lot of potential here. Now, the next one over here is called trim. So let's go ahead and take these two items, just a circle and a square, and go ahead and select trim. Now, what trim does is it uses the top shape to trim the bottom shape, and it leaves the top shape alone. So if I move this now, as you can see, it cut a piece out. Now let me do this. Let me undo, undo, and put them back together. Here's the difference between a trim and a divide. If I select divide, not only will it trim this piece, but it also trim this piece and every other piece it comes in contact with. Trim and divide. Lots of fun. Let's go into merge and crop. Now the first one, merge, I've got two exact sets here. If I select these pieces and I click the Merge button right here, what happened is those were solid pieces, circle, square, and triangle. Each piece is now separate. So that's a weird kind of merge, Andy. Sounds more like a cut or a trim. And as a matter of fact, isn't that exactly what trim would have done? Yes. I got the same set down here. These two face colors are exactly the same. Merge does not work with strokes. So I put a stroke on this one so you could see that they are indeed separate shapes. That's important. 
Now, let's select all three. Come over here and click Merge. And watch what happens. Anytime you come with two colors, and those two colors are exactly the same, it will weld those shapes together. So if you're trying to unite a bunch of shapes into one shape, just make sure they have the same face color and you'll be fine. If they're different colors, it cuts. Next one over is called Crop. Now what Crop does, let me go ahead and select these two, it uses the top shape to crop out the bottom. So whatever's left is going to be in the shape of the triangle, but it's going to be this shape down here that's left. All this stuff goes away. The only part that survives is right underneath the triangle. When the triangle has done its job, it goes away. As you can see, the only thing left is the part of the circle that existed under the triangle. Now, it only works with the top and the bottom shape, not the middle shape. So all I did on this one is put another shape on top, the blue circle. We have the green triangle and the red circle down here. And if we do that again, all we're left with is where the circle is. So trim works best with two objects, but if you've got more than two, it's only going to use the top and the bottom. Let's go to Outline and minus back the last two. Let's go ahead and select these two up here. Now Outline does something that's very straightforward. It outlines it. If I click here, there are no strokes on that. It creates an outline. Now it's hard to see, but the outlines are the original colors. So if I come in here and select those, and we can pump up our weight on those so you can see that a little bit better, it creates outlines. Might be more fun if we do this one. Come down here and select all that stuff. Click outline again, and maybe pump up our weight a little bit so we can see it. It creates an outline of whatever it finds, and it keeps the same color for the stroke, but eliminates the fill. All right, this one over here is called minus back. So I have a star. Let me show you something before I actually select it again. This is the star. It's in front. I've got this vertical line and I've got these two polygons on either side of the star. That's three objects. So if I come in here now and select it again, and I select minus back, it basically takes everything away that was behind it and leaves only the parts that didn't have, let me undo that, that didn't have anything directly underneath them. Now, if we take it in case, oh, say something like this, two circles, you got the moon. Or an um, eclipse, could be a solar eclipse. We had one of those not too long ago. The Pathfinder tools to me are gold because there are so many creative things that you can do with these. Let's do one more thing. File new. Give me a new. Pick up your star tool. Draw a star. And I want, actually, let's start with what you'd see first off. You'd see one with five. I want 12 points. So that's five, up arrow key, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Hold the shift key down so that the top and bottom and left and right points are up and down on left and right. Something about like that. Give that a fill color. Pick up your ellipse tool. And let's go to center. Now, what I love about this is if you've got smart guides on, you can see right there, it's telling me I'm in the center. Hold down the Alt key to draw out from center and then draw out with the Shift key too. And what I want is something like about that. Kind of looks like a weird looking device, doesn't it? What we want to do here, well, let me show you both ways how this works. If I select it all and click my minus back, I get that. I guess that's cool, but it's not what I want. So what we're going to have to do here is take our circle and put it underneath the star. And so we'll go object and go into arrange and say send it back. Do the same thing. Select both. Click that button. And now you get those things. Let's do this. Select them all. Go to the word object. And let's group them so we don't mess them about. Pick up your line segment tool. Go to center. Again, smart guides will tell you exactly where that is. 
and draw a line straight up and then come back to center and draw another line, say about like that. Of course, I'm making a clock. If we come over to this tool, which of course is our width tool, and we select our first one here, that's the minute hand, I guess, get somewhere about like that and maybe stretch that out. And we can do the same thing to this one, select it and stretch it out a little bit. And there you go. Hey, what time is it? Well, it looks like it's about eight o'clock to me. So we made a clock in a sense, kind of an art deco kind of thing out of a Pathfinder tool. There are a lot of possibilities to this particular area. Pathfinder tools, been there a long time, but they're really fun to work with. On to the next.